Hi there, everyone. Welcome back. We are taking a look at Terry Goodkind's Sword of Truth series. Uh, today we're taking a look at the sixth book, Faith of the Fallen. Now, um, before I go any farther, let me apologize. I was going to try to get this video up yesterday, but there was a problem with the video that I recorded from that time. So I needed to spend some time to re-record it, and I didn't get a chance to do so until now. Uh, so it's going to be uploaded a day late. I apologize for that inconvenience. So today we're looking at Faith of the Fallen, the sixth book in Terry Goodkind's Sword of Truth series. Uh, as stated before, we're going to talk first about uh, the sixth wizard rule in this book, um, because in the initial concept of Sword of Truth, each book in the series was going to have a wizard rule that surrounds the overall theme of the book, and then also bring other rules uh, from previous books back into this one. So Wizard's Sixth Rule is a little interesting. Um, it's the only sovereign you can allow to rule yourself is reason. And the more you go through all of Goodkind's work, the more you see reason um, pop up as um, part of the daily life here in this world that Goodkind has created. And as I stated before, uh, a lot of what good kind writes as far as the wizard rules is more on rules of life, not so much rules of magic. And while there is stuff about magic, most of these wizard rules are um, part of the daily lifestyle of people here. So the Goodreads breakdown we have of this uh, is a bit higher than Soul of the Fire. Uh, we have 26,517 five-star reviews. 16,664 star reviews, 9,785 three star reviews, 3,074 two star reviews, and then 1,363 one star reviews. A lot of reviews for this one. And in fact, once again, we have another polarizing book in Good Kind Sort of Truth series. It seems that they all tend to be this way from this point on. Uh, but I see a lot of odd reviews for Faith of the Fallen. Um, once again, if you want a good chance to read proper criticism uh, of the book that has validity, go ahead and read the three-star reviews. Um, for example, Goodreads has almost 10,000 of them, because that's where I think a lot of the genuine criticism comes from. And um, if people are going to get serious about what they didn't like about the book, they will actually give it three stars and say what they did like. Um, if you look at the opening one-star review on Goodreads, it's very interesting. The review has nothing to do about the book at all. In fact, it's more of an attack against Terry Goodkind and his writing style. Uh, reviews like that I tend to find a little unprofessional in many cases. So... Once again, as I stated before, you got to take some of these reviews with a grain of salt here, especially the one star reviews. So let's move on to the book, Faith of the Fallen. This is the conclusion of the Imperial Order series set of books within Sword of Truth. I said this before, books one and two tend to be the dark and raw books. Um, three through six are we call the Imperial Order set. Seven and eight are pristinely ungifted. And nine through 11 are chain fire with 12 to 15 being Richard and Kalen. This is the conclusion of that Imperial Order series. However, the Imperial Order storyline does not get finished in this book. Um, instead, what we have is kind of a midway point that jumps us into the rest of the series and how it's probably going to finish up. So Faith of the Fallen picks up, I don't know if I would say immediately after Soul of the Fire, like a lot of his other books tend to do. But uh, Richard and Kaylin and uh, Kara are back in the Westland. And as far as Kara goes, this is her first time in Westland. And Richard is building a house um, so Kaylin can um, heal. As you remember, at the end of Soul of the Fire, she was beaten up uh, pretty badly, almost to an unrecognizable state. She had lost the baby she was carrying. And so Richard goes back home, uh, away from everything, back to the world without magic. But it turns out that it gets even worse that the people there in the Westland don't want him there. And so he has to find this secluded place in the woods where no one is going to bother him. Enter 
your antagonist for the book, and she's probably one of the best antagonists in the series, and that is Sister Nikki. And I'm going to put that in big quotes, antagonist, because she's really only an antagonist for this book. Uh, she is one of the Sisters of the Dark in service of the Emperor. Uh, Jagan, Yagang, I've heard both, so whichever one fits for you, that's fine. Um, and the Emperor is trying to bring down Richard. Well, Sister Nikki is going to do what she can to uh, bring Richard down. And she has an interesting uh, concept about how to do this. She's going to put a maternity spell on Kaelin, so everything that Sister Nikki feels uh, and goes through, Kaelin can feel as well. Uh, and she takes Richard away um, so that she can prove her point. And then eventually, once that is done, uh, Richard is free to go back to Kaelin as she releases the maternity spell, supposedly. It's all under the guise of, will the magic really work and all that. So, that is the basis of Faith of the Fallen. Sister Nikki takes Richard away. He, uh, they go deep into the lands of the Imperial Order and the Old World, uh, where Richard has to kind of live in this uh, communist-style um, world. As I mentioned before, Terry Goodkind loves the anti-communist angle. Um, and so what we have here actually is almost a very close um, brother to Stone of Tears. Uh, and I'll get into some of the similarities there. It is not similar in the way that Richard gets taken away. He gets taken away to go and live a lifestyle to be shown that what he's trying to fight against is actually good, that the um, communist uh, world that he is fighting against from Soul of the Fire and even in some of the previous books is there to help people. Excuse me. Um, and so that's the basis of what Nikki is trying to do, and that's how Richard is taken away with the maturity spell. Kaelin is off to fight the war. This is where the similarities with Stone of Tears really begins. Yes, Richard and Kaelin are far apart from each other. Yes, uh, they both want to try to find ways to get back to each other's arms and all that. But Kaelin's story kind of remains the same from Stone of Tears when she had to handle a military issue to Faith of the Fallen. She's separated from Richard. She has to handle a military issue. And what I actually was very glad to see in Faith of the Fallen was Kaelin's character start to grow again. She's been wounded. She's getting better. Um, and then she's off to fight this war against the Imperial Order who's invading her homeland, especially after the issue with the people of Andorus. Uh, and a lot of this is going to focus around keeping her kingdom, Idendril, her kingdom, her city, Idendril safe. Also trying to help her sister. And uh, her brother enters the picture. Uh, these, of course, half-sister and half-brother because uh, they are from the previous marriage in Kaelin's, uh, Kaelin's mother's life. Uh, one of the strong points, actually, is even though that the military part is very similar to what's happening in Stone of Tears, I think it's actually one of the stronger parts of the book because you get a chance to see um, more of the action taking place in the war. If I would have something to say about the series as a whole and how it handles the Emperor and the invasion of the world, it's that you don't really get a chance to see any uh, great amount of battles. And in this one, you do. Uh, you get a chance to see the combat, or at least hear stories about what's happening with the combat. As you move through the rest of the series, you'll get to see more, but not as much as I wanted in an epic, grand-scale conflict like this. So Faith of the Fallen definitely did that for me. It gave me the military aspect of this. Now, some of the, the, the largest um, cons of this book are kind of almost, like I said, almost the same as the previous ones. Um, the divisiveness of this book going forward is that people tend to see the political ramblings of good kind shine through in this novel. Now I'm going to kind of do a pro-con thing at the same time. The uh, political diatribe that we've complained about in previous books is very strong in Faith of the Fallen, that being said. Without the political diatribes, there would be no story. And that's part of the problem. A lot of what Sister Nikki is trying to do is she's trying to get Richard to understand their way of life. And what he's trying to do is trying to get her to understand his way of life through other means necessary. So in that way, 
the political diatribe, while sometimes is a little eye rolling, uh, it actually serves a part of the story. Unlike uh, our, our book in a few weeks, where it doesn't really serve a purpose, here it, it truly serves the purpose to get the story moving. And that's something that I really uh, enjoyed is that you can have this idea of you don't want something like that, uh, a society like that to exist. But at the same time, you're, you're, it's two conflicting ideas, and they work as far as the storyline aspect goes. Also, um, I actually was not a fan of the way that Westland treated Richard and Kalen. Now, granted, this is a story element that I can, you know, grow to uh, like as part of the story. It just seemed very out of character still after everything that happened in Wizard's first rule. Especially things that happened with his brother Michael. Yes, I know Michael is dead, but still, the people in Westland are very um, underutilized and underwritten, I think, in this book. Now, going into the pros, I already said that um, the political diatribe, while it is a bit eye-rolling at points, it uh, is a part of the story, and it's nothing we can really escape. The other thing I really like in this, in this book is one of the first times since Dark and Raw that your antagonist really feels fleshed out. You really get a full understanding of your antagonist. Sister Nikki is one of the best characters in the series, and it's a shame it takes until book six to really get her swinging. Uh, yes, she's been in, in Stone of Tears, but Faith of the Fallen is where she really gets a chance to shine. She has that backstory of her when she actually gets to see Richard in the Palace of the Prophets back in Stone of Tears. You get her backstory. You understand why she is the way she is and why she is uh, going to have that story arc throughout and actually join spoilers, join Richard by the end of the whole thing. Yes, you see how the Imperial Order's uh, mentality connects with her, and it's how it makes sense, but in the end, how that can break her and eventually make her come to Richard's side and the whole thing. That, I think, uh, is, is an amazing part of Faith of the Fallen. The way the two stories of, of Kaelin trying to get back to Richard and fighting the war and Richard trying to find ways out and make a point with the people in, um, in the Imperial Order's home world, uh, the way they connect is excellent. The story of Richard trying to make the statue to drive home the point of uh, the anti-oppression um, and how he has to kind of do it in secret and good things can come from um, a, a way of thinking that is not your own. He really kind of drives home the point that if you want to have a society like that in the Imperial Order, it can only bring things down. Nothing can ever get done if if things are constantly being passed around and people who who um, who, who work very hard at, at trying to accomplish something, they kind of have to do it in secret in a society like this because the society won't allow them to uh, to work on such a grand statue that he works on. And for it to be one of the first non-oppressive statues in the history of the Imperial Order, it's quite beautiful. And that's the the image on the front cover. And I think I, I've seen an interview with Terry Goodkind, really bad glare, saying it's probably one of the uh, his his favorite covers out of all his book. I think you know I can check on that. But um, that was from one of the uh, Legend of the Secret DVDs. I believe uh, it is one of the better covers, in my opinion, too. Now, let's get to the overall consensus here. This ended up as being one of the most cautious books that I went into, and it's because of the research I did into it before I started reading the book. Now, this is book six. I figured by this point, if you've gotten this far reading Sword of Truth, you might as well finish. And I know that the next few books in the series are tough to get through. Push yourself forward because it has a great payoff in the end. Faith of the Fallen really is a high point in the series. We've got 17 books. This is book six, and I believe it to be one of, if not the best book in the series, in my personal opinion. I know a lot of people don't like this one. I really actually liked this book quite a bit. I was reading it um, consistently for a while, and then I got to page, let's see, around page 450, and I just had to push through because I, I could not stop. Um, and I just sat there and read this this incredibly intense ending that uh, Terry Goodkind loves writing these intense endings 
that that keeps you going. Um, and even if you're struggling through most of the book, when you get to that ending, it's like, wow, okay, uh, everything is very intense uh, and actually drives you to read the next story in the book. If I give it a rating, it's actually, this is uh, one of the few books, I think there's only two or three in the series that I gave five stars to. Um, I'm not saying if the series ended here, that would be fine, but it, it is one of those things where I, I really enjoyed the book to that point. If Good Kind stopped writing, I'd be good with this conclusion. Even though it doesn't really end the overall story, I could see this being an incredible ending to a good series. That being said, where we're headed to next week with the Pillars of Creation, um, that's where you're going to start to see a lot of um, people upset about the way the series starts to go. I'll explain more about that uh, next week's video, which I should have up on, on Monday, even though it'll be New Year's Day. Uh, so, Faith the Fallen, five stars. Uh, I definitely recommend it. And I also say at this point, if you've made it this far in the Sword of Truth series, I think you're good. You can keep going. Um, a lot of people say they, they read up to a certain point in a series and then they kind of fall off and they stop. I think if you're at this point, keep going. See where it, ha see where it heads towards. And if you really are still struggling uh, with the next two, and I don't blame you, keep going. Read up to Confessor, the original ending of the Sword of Truth series. And if you still like what you're reading, consider going forward very cautiously. Oh, excuse me. And we'll talk more about that when we get actually to the review of Confessor. As of right now, Faith of the Fallen stands as um, one of the high points of the series. And I think um, if I were to read Sword of Truth again, this would be one of the ones that I would I would thoroughly enjoy once more. So thank you for joining me. I'm, once again, I'm sorry for the video getting up so late. Uh, next week, we'll have the review for the Pillars of Creation, which is the first in the series of the Pristinely Ungifted. There's only two in that series. Um, excuse me. You can follow me on Instagram at DiceChucker. That's where all my board game stuff is behind me right here is uh, some of my board game collection um, and you can find me on facebook i'm gonna i try to start an actual page for this channel through facebook so you can link right here so if you want to follow me there give me a few days and i should be able to have it up uh, you can find me at matthew bartlett right now and i will actually post the page on my profile within the next few days and get all the videos up there as well you can also subscribe to this channel if you like what you see and watch some of our other, my other videos here chronicling this sort of truth series. Uh, a little preview. I think I mentioned it. I am going to be doing Wheel of Time. I'm still reading it, though. So uh, I've got until mid-March to finish the sort of truth series. And if I'm still behind on Wheel of Time, I'm probably going to review one of the lesser known children's fantasy series, uh, Chronicles of Prydain. Uh, some people only know it because of that Disney movie, Black Cauldron. We'll talk about that. But um, if I'm not done with Wheel of Time, by the time I'm finished reviewing Sword of Truth, I will have a little buffer series of doing the Chronicles of Prydain. Uh, something you can look forward to. And one thing that always pops up, too, is that uh, I will probably, at the end of my Wheel of Time reviews, do a comparison video between Wheel of Time and Sword of Truth, since... A lot of those, uh, a lot of the elements in these stories get compared to each other, and I'll go through that and what I think about it, and whether or not it has any merit, because uh, I know it's a large community online that kind of argues both sides of that. Thank you for watching. Like what you see here, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and tune in next week for uh, my review on the Pillars of Creation, and that will get us closer to the end of the Sword of Truth series. Thanks for watching, everyone.